if you have somebody that looks like a Pikachu and talks like a Pikachu, does he make it like a Pikachu? Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about if dy dx is a fraction or not, and I'm going to give you guys my best explanation possible, so check this out. First of all, I will give you guys a quick answer, and now it's going to be a no. <laughs> and then I think the reason why this is rather debatable is because of the word fraction. And let me give you guys a simple definition of what a fraction is. So in simple words, I will just tell you a fraction is a part of a whole. And that's pretty much it. And let's talk about our favorite way to talk about what a fraction is. Namely, we are going to start with a pizza. And we are going to cut this into different sizes. And let's say we have A slices like this. And of course, I'm not going to eat the whole thing for dinner tonight. I would just say, let's say I want to eat three sizes. Let's say this, this, and that. So if you look at this picture, let me ask you, what fraction of the pizza am I going to eat for tonight? Well, you can look at this, and you can see that we have eaten three slices out of eight. So the fraction is just three over eight. So that's pretty much it. Even though this is how a fraction looks, but you have to remember, we have three slices out of the total of eight slices. So that's what makes this a fraction. Well, well, if you look at dy dx, it does look like a fraction as well. But can we say we are taking dy part out of dx? It doesn't make sense anymore, right? So this looks like a fraction. It works like a fraction, but technically it's not a fraction. And I'm going to give you guys a few more things right here. I can tell you guys, 3 over a is what we call a rational number. So that's good. People will be like, okay, sure. It's 3 over 8. Rational number, fraction, rational number. Good. But let me tell you guys that if I give you another number such as 2 over pi, then let me tell you this right here is not a rational number. And now, it's kind of weird because they look similar. How come am I saying this is a rational number, this is not a rational number? Well, here's the deal. We have to remember what definition of what a rational number is. So let's talk about this right here. In math, we use Q for the set of all the rational numbers. And this right here is the set. And all the elements right here looks like M over N, such that both M and N are elements of z, so they have to be integers, and another thing is that n, the denominator, cannot be zero. So whenever you want to call a fraction looking thing a rational number, you have to make sure top and bottom they are whole numbers. They can be negative though, but you cannot have pi. That's why 2 over pi is not considered a rational number. So you might be thinking, hey, you see, they look both like fractions, so can you just call that to be a fraction? I think it's okay. People are not going to be mad at you because when you have 2 over pi, you can still you know, call that to be a fraction. This is like 2 centimeters out of pi centimeters, I should say. Then that means this is 0 to pi, and you are just taking 2 centimeters out of it. So that might work if you have the same ratio, you just take 2 out of pi. That is a fraction, good, but it's not a rational number, okay? All right. Now, let's talk about what dy dx is there. Well, I will have to draw some pictures for you guys. So here we go. Let me just say I have a picture that looks like this. And let's just say we have y being f of x. So let's talk about what dy dx is. First of all, I'm going to pick two points on the curve. I will call this one to be the first point, named dx1, y1. And this right here, I'll just call it x2, y2. And of course, ideally speaking, the points should be close enough. But you know, I have to draw it big so we can all see it. Anyway, first thing first, when we have two points, we can of course connect them with a dot, uh, with, with a line. <laughs> connect the dot with a line. So let's do that. And when we do that, we have a line like this, right? And take a look of this blue straight line. This is straight, just think about it. This is a straight line, okay? All right. So you can see, to go from this point to this point, we can travel horizontally like this. And this much is delta x, the change in the x values. And we can go up from here to here namely delta y. And of course, you can just work this out. Delta y is just y2 minus y1. And delta x is just x2 minus x1. And if you divide, you get the usual slope formula. So if you like, you can look at the slope is equal to this. And now we have the slope formula. That's good. Here is the deal on what dy dx is compared to delta y delta x. This right here is the slope of the secant line. For dy dx, you have to talk about the derivative, namely the slope of tangent lines. 
So look at this right here. Perhaps this is our starting point right here. Let's just say that x1, y1. I want to draw tangent line, so I'm just going to try my best. So let's say this is my tangent line. Right? Okay, here is the deal. Sometimes it's not easy to figure what delta y is. Well, so in that case, we have to rely on derivatives. So here is the deal. The n is precisely f prime at x1, namely the derivative of the function evaluated at x1. Right? That's the m for the slope of the tangent line. Now, here is how we are going to draw the picture. We are going to go horizontally from here to here, and vertically from here up here. The whole red part, as you can see from here to here, this right here is denoted by dy. This right here, we take dx and delta x to be the same. We can just call that to be dx as well. Now, here is the deal. For the red part, I will just tell you the red slope is equal to f prime of x1. And the slope of this, as you can see, we still have the triangle picture, so I can still put down this as dy over dx. But again, in this case here, I cannot tell you we are taking dy out of dx part. It doesn't make sense. And of course, I should have addressed that. Of course, we have different kinds of fractions, such as the improper fractions, such as the other fractions, right? But it doesn't make sense for us to say take dy out of dx. Right here, we could. That's why we say fraction is a part of the whole, and dy dx is technically not a fraction. Anyway, this is dy over dx, and it's a ratio. Sometimes the ratio is not a fraction, and that's the deal. And here, I'm going to give you guys an example of a ratio. Let's say we're looking at the ratio of the number of students to the amount of integrals that they have to do for homework. And let's say we have a total of 20 students, and we have a total of 600 integrals. And of course, we can write it as 20 with these two dots and the 600 like this for a ratio, right? However, whenever we're talking about ratio of two things, we like to use the fractional notation to write this. So we can put this down as 20 over 600. And you just have to remember the top represents the number of students and the bottom represents the number of integrals. And the reason we like to use the fraction notation is because we can work just like a fraction. We can reduce this the go away. Of course, we end up with 1 over 30. But again, we are not talking about picking one integral out of 30. This is not a part of a whole. So this is technically not a fraction, neither. This is a ratio. And if you are not convinced that, that this, is not a this is not a fraction, well, check this out. What if we have a ratio of this to that, and maybe let's say to differential equations. Let's say we have 20 to 600 to let's say 1,000 differential equation. I can still put down two dots and 1,000. This is still a legitimate ratio, but can I put down 20 over 600 for the first two things and then put down 1,000 like this? Well, I don't think so. Although there are what we call the complex fraction, where we have small fractions over a denominator, but it does not make sense in this case at all, right? So ratios look like fractions, they work like fractions, but they are not fractions. Just like this right here, the dy dx. And now let's finish this right here. So what exactly do we do to get the dy dx? Well, the idea is that you look at the blue part, you want to pick this point as close as possible to the first point. So the way to represent that is, you are going to take the limit. So dy dx is equal to, you take the limit as delta x approaching zero of the, D, of the delta y over delta x. And again, these are just ratio, you take the limit of the ratio. And technically this is not a fraction because again, we cannot say it's a part of the whole. So anyway, this is pretty much the idea, and as you can see, we can use the notation for it, which is y prime of x1, namely the derivative of the function evaluated at x1. And perhaps the, big, the best thing that we can do is, this is not a fraction bar, okay? The best thing we can do is dy dx is equal to f prime of x1, meaning that we can just put this down as dy equals, we can multiply dx on both sides because again, this works just like a fraction. So we have f prime of x1, and if you know the dx value, and usually we can just take the dx value as the delta x value, then you have what we call the differential. All right, so I think this right here is it. You guys can check out my other video if you would like for the differential, the dy versus the delta y 
business. So hopefully this answers the question to a certain degree. And again, dy dx is not a fraction. Also, it looks like a fraction. It works like a fraction because we just did, right? We multiply the dx on both sides. But you cannot hold it to be a fraction because again, you cannot say you take dy out of the total of dx. Unlike the pizza example, we could say takes three slices out of a total of eight slices. So it all depends on the definition of the word fraction, right? That's the deal. So that's it. If you still want to say dy dx is a fraction, I don't know. Let me just ask you, if you have somebody that looks like a Pikachu and talks like a Pikachu, does he make it like a Pikachu?